to another unwinding with fiber and fabric. <laughs> it's been another couple crazy weeks since I last made a video and I have um, at least one project finished, a couple other projects started. So I think I'm going to start with the project that I have finished and for all of those of you who love machine embroidery and love quilting, I have finished uh, my spring <laughs> wall hanging <laughs> and of course I'll show a picture here <laughs> with the whole quilt so that you can see it I have been so happy and so just so pleased with this quilt because it is actually as far as machine embroidery goes some pretty dense designs but amazingly enough it's still very soft when I started making this, I wasn't really sure how these designs would turn out as far as for a quilt versus a wall hanging. I was inspired, yeah, we can see that fabric and some of my hair everywhere. We can see that fabric. I was inspired by this fabric to make a spring themed wall hanging for the entry um, way of my house. And I love these designs. I love the, um, I've always loved the symbolism of the bee and the beehive and I've actually been partial to yellow most of my life so this was just something I wanted to to make it was something I started if I remember correctly over a year ago before COVID um, caused all the chaos and it kind of got put aside because I had other projects I needed to finish but I got the top put together I got it basted and I actually managed to get it quilted I think back in March but I set it aside because I didn't want to do the binding because I was working on um, a couple other projects that needed to get going one of those other projects um, oh I should say before I put this away it is all machine quilted it's on 100% cotton fabric and as much as it's a wall hanging because it is just you know the designs look stiff it's actually squishable soft and so I suspect that in the future it might end up being confiscated by a grandchild or something you know or great-grandchild or who knows but right now it's going on my wall it makes me happy and I'll put information as to where the designs come from in the description below so check that out if you're interested but I am thrilled Let's just say that is one project complete that I am delighted to have um, usable right now. So it got put aside for a little while because I needed to work on a bigger project that, um, <laughs> that I, I kind of need for this summer, but I suspect that it's going to take me a little bit longer to get it hand quilted. I keep getting delayed and so I'm not getting it quilted as fast as I would like. And I will show a picture of that here, or a number of pictures of that here. And I think I'm going to include at the end of this video a little montage of the process that I went through with my husband to get this quilt basted um, a few weeks ago. I was worried that we would get uh, some warm weather and that it would be hard for me to get outside and get, um, get another quilt basted. As it turned out, that was really the warmest day we had for quite some time. It got cold. There's been many days that other than some wind, I could have got out and basted this, but it is basted. It is being hand quilted and it will take me a while. It is huge. I have never done a quilt this large. I have done a king size quilt once before and a couple queens over the years, but this thing is huge. I posted a picture of it in um, a Facebook group a few weeks ago of my husband helping me baste it and it received tons and tons of likes. <laughs> it's the first time I've actually hit 1k in anything <laughs> that I posted. It's been fun. My daughter helped me sew some of the pieces together. All the fabric is hand dyed and so I've decided to put together a little montage video of the process of basting it. Um, so I'll put it right at the very end for those who want to watch 
a cute little clip of the process of basting a king size quilt on a frame that is set up outside under the sky. But before we get to that, the main thing I wanted to, to share this week is I, and I know it's not going to come up on the camera very well, okay? The color I know tends to read sometimes a little blue. It's actually purple and green. I will put some pictures here that might show the color a little bit better. This is pencil roving, and for people who don't spin, pencil roving, it looks rather a whole lot like yarn, but it isn't. It's just a thin section of fiber that if I pull on it, it just pulls right apart. Now, the nice thing about pencil roving is you can sit down at your spinning wheel and spin, and you've already, just by putting some twist, you've already got the strand of yarn, the single. So I like to have pencil roving on hand because whenever I have somebody who wants to see how spinning is done, this is a really easy thing for me to use to do a demonstration, or better yet, to give someone who's never tried spinning a chance to see how spinning works. When you spin from carded fiber, when you spin from um, locks, when you spin from other preps of fiber besides this um, carded roving that's already put into a very small diameter fiber, when you, when you spin from that, it can take a little bit more finesse, figuring out the drafting. And, well, it's not necessarily always as fun for the person who's just investigating uh, a lot of times, um, I used to do it at county fairs. Little kids, they want to try it. Big kids, adults, they all want to tr they want to try to see how the spinning wheel works. And I just found that having pencil roving on hand makes it so much more fun and successful feeling. <laughs> so I decided I needed to <laughs> dye my pencil roving, and I have a little short video that I'm gonna snip in here. And then I will be back to tell you how it turned out. So hold on, and we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so we're going to do something a little different today. I have a big cake of pencil roving. I have my gloves. I have a protective apron on so that I can protect my clothing and my hands. And I'm using dyes that I have purchased from Pro Chemical and Dye. Um, it would be just as easy to use dyes from any of the other dye companies. These are acid dyes. And I'm not wanting to make up a lot of dye, um, just a little bit. I use pencil roving for. Um, demonstrations where you know people can get their hands on the, the fiber a little bit and and give it a try it just seems to be an easy way for people to see how spinning works but without really needing to know how to draft so I like to use pencil roving for that however I think a big cake of natural colored um, roving is kind of boring. So I'm going to inject a little color. I have never tried this before. I already suspect there's going to be a few pit pitfalls of if I put too much liquid or dye in it, um, I might have trouble getting it all you know, exhausted or have trouble getting the roving to, to dry. But hey! <laughs> Gotta give it a try. So I've mixed up my dye. I do recommend that if you are doing this, it's, it's good to allow the dye to set for a little bit, dissolve. But hey, we have a camera going. So here we go. Um, and I'm also not being very careful in my measurements, just having fun. Fabulous way to inject dye into um, something of this nature. 
is big syringes. And I'm just gonna start, oops. Okay, so, forgot something. It doesn't want to absorb in a dry cake. So let me go over and pre-soak this just a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back now. I have pre-soaked this in a combination of water and um, vinegar. And now I should be able to have, inject the dye and it will soak in where I want to put it. Now, as I said, I've never tried this before. I could be making a gigantic <laughs> ball of roving that will never spin. And if that's the case, well, I'll make some um, dryer balls that I can either use in the dryer or give to my cat to shred because she really enjoys playing with felted dryer balls. So just injecting the color, the areas that the water and vinegar has soaked in um, ahead of time, um, you'll see it, it's, it's drawing in the dye a lot more quickly. There'll be areas that are still pretty dry, but put in some color. And as I said, this is, this is just to try to get the pencil roving to, to have a little bit of fun to it. When I get done adding the dye, I'm going to set this into the microwave or into the oven. Actually, I'll probably put it in the oven because it's a bit of a chilly day today. So, the, and this bowl is um, able to go into the oven well. Put it in the oven on a low temperature and let it set. Um, I think I have the information in one of my other videos. I will put um, specific temperatures in the description below. Oops. So just adding, just adding the color. And then one more purple. And one of the things that I think I might do when this is done, I'm adding the color, but if you, if you don't want it to just be in stripes, once you add the color like this, if you submerge your, um, especially when working with yarn, um, if you submerge your fiber in some water, it will force the color to, to bleed and blend. Um, so you can apply it carefully like this, but then you can get it to bleed and blend just by getting it wet. I'm hoping I can figure out a way to get all the water out of this and get my yarn or my fiber to, to dry fully. Um, I'm sure I'll have a summary of how this all turns out in the main video, but that's pretty much playing with it. And if this was yarn, I'd be very, very pleased. I don't like to waste any of the dye and there's dye in the bottom of my cups. So just by putting some extra vinegar into the cups, I can then dissolve the extra dye and I'll let it run around the bottom. It will sink underneath and so the other side, the back side, I guess you could say, of this will have a different type of color application. But that's pretty much it. It's going to go into the oven now and um, and set. So we'll uh, be back with you when we have that done. A quick update. I looked at the back of this before I put it in the oven and I noticed there wasn't much dye there. So I did this. <laughs> and if you notice, it made it so it all blended and merged together. The back side is still very light in comparison. I think that once this is all baked in, it should 
be very interesting, um, very interesting fiber to try to spin. We'll give it a try. <laughs> be back in a bit with an update. And so I'm back. As you can see in the video with the dyeing, it isn't a very complicated process. I just had a lot of fun. The most complicated part of dyeing a cake of roving is, and I'm getting my fingers in there, is getting it dry inside. I have managed to get the center dry and I've managed to get the outside dry, but it is still wet here in the sun, uh, inside the layers. So I'm going to put this back in front of my makeshift drying area. I'll show a picture here. It's basically a clothing rack, an old towel, and a fan. And I'll probably put it back there and see if I can dry it out just a little bit more. Otherwise, I think I am going to break this down into smaller bundles of pencil roving. It will be easier when I do the demonstrations. Um, it'll be easier to, to work with. So it worked out better than I expected. I'll make sure to include photos that show the color a little bit better as well. So that is what I wanted to bring you as far as dyeing. There was one more thing I wanted to share before I wrap up today, and that is back to that springtime quilt. I had a number of people asking me how um, I went about making that. Specifically, people who do machine embroidery but are not quilters. And it started me thinking that maybe I should put together a very simple diagram explanation of how to put together a basic quilt like that. I have the other quilting patterns that I've done and I highly recommend anybody who's interested in trying quilting who have not to start with some basic patch patches. You don't have to make a whole quilt. Just try the patches that I've put, the, the blocks that I've put out there in pattern. Give them a try get comfortable with your sewing machine, um, get comfortable with the seam allowances. Then, once you've played around with a block or two, dive right into sewing a quilt like this, um, this, this uh, spring quilt that, that I've made. I, I don't want to go into a ton of explanation. I'm not trying to replace all the wonderful classes you can take. I recommend quilting classes, but if you want just a simple diagram of how to put together a quilt to highlight your machine embroidery as I've done with this springtime quilt, there will be a PDF in my blog. Description down below will include the link, a free pattern that gives basically a diagram of how to put sashing around a block and the measurements I use to make that specific um, wall hanging. And it must be time for me to go because one of my cats has come in to buy me again. So I think I'm going to wrap this unwinding with fiber and fabric up, reminding you that if you'd like, there at the very end, I'm going to include a video of my crazy day spent with my husband basting a king size quilt out in nature. <laughs> and uh, just sharing that crazy, crazy little experience with you. So I hope you enjoy. I hope you have a wonderful day and that you have so much fun ahead when you unwind with fiber and fabric. We'll see you again soon.